Well, hello and welcome to Blockiders.io with me, Gillian Gossel. My guest today is the president, CEO and founder of NDAC, or National Digital Asset Exchange in Canada, Mr. Bilal Hamoud. Hello, Bilal, and thank you so much for joining the program. Thanks for having me. No, I'm really pleased to have you because we were just talking off camera before we started. Um, and we, we want, you want to talk about your exchange, which is right and proper and why it's good and why, you know, why, why it's better than other, other exchanges in parts. But I always think it's interesting to know who the people are behind the projects. So I was looking through your LinkedIn profile and I'm going construction, chemical engineering. There's not cryptocurrency or software. So tell me, when did, when did you first get involved in crypto? Where was the first spark? Um, it's, it's funny because yes, my background is engineering. Um, I've been, uh, you know, working oil and gas industry and civil engineering, um, for most of my life. But, uh, what people don't know that I've been, uh, trading stocks and equities and, uh, very interested in the financial markets for quite, uh, some time. So, uh, even though, you know, I had a full-time job doing, uh, my engineering work, I've always been interested in a financial market. And uh, I had a company that we were starting in 2009 uh, around uh, around stocks and, and whatnot. And um, unfortunately, at that time, um, uh, the Canadian banking industry was not ready for what we wanted to do um, um, around open APIs and, and and uh, and for that, uh, I start looking for alternatives. And I, I believe it uh, that we in 2011. That's my first exposure to uh, Bitcoin. Um, I d I never bought any Bitcoin back then, but that's when I start you know learning about it, seeing what it is, and uh, and start watching it. Um, and it was in 2014 when I bought a little bit after the hype and then the pump and uh, uh, it went back. Was that to, scary? Uh, yes, yes, it was. But you know what? I've, 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 I've traded all different types of stocks. Uh, some that they, they blue chip stocks, some are like pharmaceutical uh, stocks that they, you know, they're news pump and dump kind of stocks. So I've seen it all. Um, it was pretty scary seeing the price moving that volatile and you know the with the volatility and, and uh, um, a lot of manipulations and very low liquidity kind of thing so you see the uh, big jumps and, and drops in, in in the prices and um you know um and I, I added it to my portfolio start watching it and uh with the other stocks and uh, in 2017 um, I start seeing a lot of people around me wanted to get in and wanted to buy it. And, uh, and that's kind of what got my interest. We, we tried to, uh, you know, purchase some Bitcoin in 2017 along with, you know, for, for a larger group of uh, people, I friends and, um, you know, the, 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 the entire process from uh, KYC uh, and, uh, um, you know, exchange and shutting down. And what, what was hard about buying Bitcoin in 2017? So um, there was a couple things. So like going through an account opening process, uh, it typically took sometimes between two to three weeks. Some exchanges that did not uh, take on the new customers. And uh, and the, the next big thing was the banking, right? Um, we had one exchange. Uh, it's no longer there now. It's Quadriga CX. So there was a big article about it yesterday with the OSC, how the, the founder kind of uh, frauded the entire community. Um, and... Um, and uh, you know, it, it was it was too obvious with the way they were doing things. Um, you know, you you would make a deposit for you know a wire for a you know ten thousand dollars, or or and it would take you know two weeks to get deposited into your bank account, and uh, and you have no idea where the money was going, or uh, um, and, you know when, when you look at the deposit details, you'll see like a shell a shell company, a number numbered company most of the time is a payment processor that we don't you don't know about so it created a lot of uncertainties um so for that uh 
I put a plan together and I approached a couple Canadian banks. Um, I, I got the typical no, we, we, we don't, we don't want to work with cryptocurrency uh, services. And, uh, and finally, I ended up speaking with one of the directors at one of the Canadian banks. And uh, they said, okay, well, if you guys, you know, bring me, uh, you know, be a uh, FinTrack, uh, registering, registers an MSP, uh, produce, you know, legal documents like uh, policy and procedures, hire a proper team, um, then we could go on a pilot project with you guys. And then that was the kind of what, ignited the, the, the entire experience you know we wanted to bring safety and security uh and, uh, and you know a, a value to why we want to start the exchange and we don't want necessarily to be just another exchange that trying to compete with you know the big the big exchanges around there we wanted to provide like a unique um uh have a unique value for the Canadian customers specifically. So we only can, we only service our, uh, you know, Canadian market. So do you have a rampway, like for example, you're saying getting the money, you have a rampway onto the exchange from Canadian banks. That's right. So, so that's, any, that's any, huge. That's a huge yes. starting point. Yeah. So we started the pilot phase and since then, uh, we, it was kind of the opening for uh, many more, uh, services uh, to uh, uh, to actually um, gain banking relationship with that specific bank because they saw uh, the way we did our our compliance we hired a chief compliance officer that had uh, about 16 years of experience in um, in financial markets you know in, in big uh, like CIBC with Gandhi and Altacorp financial and we have uh, most of our staff are, are very educated. Uh, uh, they're not crypto, uh, you know, gurus, but then they're very educated in the traditional market. So they do have a very good understanding from uh, accounting. We have a, you know, CPA, CFA. Uh, we we have um, you know a, a compliance officer. We have a operations officer and. Uh, and with that, uh, we, we brought a little bit more of the traditional markets to the crypto market. So since then, we've been running the exchange very smoothly. Uh, we did a couple of big partnerships with, you know, uh, wallet providers like Ledger Vault and BitGo. And, uh, uh, and um, yeah, that's my story so far. So how important, when you set up the exchange in uh, 2018, uh, in in April, I think. How important was it? You have? Did you have to create the, the the rules, or were the rules there? Did you have? To, did you? Was there a, a regulation from the Canadian government to say this is what you do to set up an exchange, or were you kind of touchy feely? I think this is the way we should go because it seems better. Uh, yeah. So we we really uh, we we really uh, up to up to to date. There were there is no uh, uh, rules. Uh, there's guidance now this past year after after quadriga uh, disappeared and einstein disappeared and a couple other smaller exchanges disappeared uh um there is you know you see the regulators are, are moving towards uh, regulating the space so they issued uh, guidance this past year but up until then we really needed to do our homework we needed to make sure uh you know, we're not adding securities. We're being very careful on which assets we have on our platform, uh, how we're conducting ourselves, what kind of, uh, you know, from data protection to custom protection to, you know, uh, how we're. So you're, you're acting like a very traditional exchange. Exactly. Those, those kind of rules, except this crypto. So what type of crypto is on your exchange? What assets are on your exchange? Right now we have the top, um seven or eight cryptos in, in current market cap uh bitcoin litecoin ethereum um xrb cardano stellar um uh, eos um uh, you know we, we focus on quality uh, rather than uh, you know our, our system we have one of 
the most advanced trading platform out there. Uh, but we, we're trying what to... What makes it the most advanced trading platform? Uh, so we have... Uh, it's ex The actual trading platform was written by the same guys that uh, did the New York Stock Exchange. So we have a... a we, we partnered up with a New York based company that provided us with the back end technology for, for the exchange. And we have, uh, you know, our, our system handles uh, 1 million transactions per second. Uh, um, a lot of options that does not exist in the crypto world, like a trailing stop limit, you know, when uh, you allow a user to take advantage of the market movement and uh, set a trailing stop. So the stop is moving as the market moving and then they can capitalize on their profits. Um, um, we have about 10 different advanced trading orders. Um, that which, are, which are not typical on ordinary crypto. Crypto tend to be fairly no. basic, aren't they? And, yeah. and what volume is going across Index now at the moment in terms of trades and customers? Uh, oh, oh, the, the trading volume uh, is split into two. Again, part of our transparency uh, policy is that uh, we have uh, retail customers and we have OTC customers. Our OTC customers are are in uh, our institutional clients, the ones that they wanted to do larger volumes and they don't want to go through the exchange itself. So we do have a, a trading desk for that, and uh, and. Uh, for the past two years, the majority of our volume have been a trading volume. Uh, this past year, we noticed a spike in in a new retail um, users starting to join the platform. Uh, you know, we came in a time when Bitcoin hit all time high and was coming down. So we we really were were in a in a bear market for the past two years in in Bitcoin for retail customers. It scared away a lot of people, um, considering that you know the Bank of Canada said around five percent of Canadians own Bitcoin, and Canada is a very small country compared to you know the the states, for instance. Um, but we're we're noticing a lot of activity now. Uh, definitely, our volumes is picking up on the on the exchange side, and because we only service the Canadian market and eight different currencies, it makes it uh, you know. Let's say the the volume is decent, but we 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 definitely want it to see. We definitely want to see it a lot higher, and I believe that's gonna, this happening as we see more and more adoption to the marketplace. Will you move outside Canada, do you think? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're getting a lot of interest in that from the U.S. Uh, we, uh, we deal with some businesses in the U.S. now, and, uh, and, but we're getting uh, some real interest in, from the retail side. Um, you know, because we do advertisement on social media, uh, we get a lot of U.S. Uh, inquiries. Uh, but as of now, U.S. is kind of similar to Canada. There's a lot of regulations around, you know, you require MTL license and all that. So we're taking it one step at a time. And then we'll, you said at the very start that uh, part of the problem with exchanges, the KYC, the onboarding. How have you streamlined your onboarding of clients? Yeah, I think that's also one of the uh the the main benefits at index we have an instant verification process so uh a lot of customers they don't need to upload a picture id or uh or a, a photo id or any anything of that sort they basically basically we rely on their credit history so we have um we have partnered up with third party provider that would check their um their credit history and uh and they just simply just need to provide, you know, their name and address and date of birth. And then the system will do an API check. And then I most suppose of the it makes time, more sense to know about their credit history than how they look or if they've dyed yes. their hair or in the lockdown, their hair hasn't yeah. been dyed. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But then you get that random instances when, you know, someone moved or they're just turned 18 or, uh, you know, and we do have... Uh, uh, our compliance officer, you know, um, they try to get everybody approved within 
uh, within the same business day. Uh, we, we have a two-day policy, but most of our users get verified. I think the main difference here is that is the personal touch, right? We do have, um, you know, we, we have, you, you can contact us via chat, via email, but also you can give us a call, right? And then we see a lot of people uh, calling and feel a lot more comfortable that they're speaking to a real person, they're helping them throughout the process and, uh, and they're getting things done. And uh, I think that's, I think that the- that is huge, and that's why I said I wanted to talk to you because, you know, there's ex- there's what there's 500 exchanges around the world. How do you know? Apart from the big, how do you know to choose them, and are they going to go, you know, bunk? Will they be hacked? Whatever. But the thought that you can actually speak to somebody, there's somebody at the end of a line, so you're actually you're a real company. That's pretty. That's you know, in terms of, of putting my money someplace, I want to know that it's. it's there's real human beings there that are going to look after it. Yeah, exactly. So we actually have a, a, a physical office in downtown Calgary too. So we get a lot of people that, you know, they, they call, they're like, hey, can, can, can we stop by? And uh, most of the That's time. That's cool. People, yeah, we, we do have a, a big uh, conference area. Uh, and uh, a lot of times, you know, we tell people, hey, you know, if you want to come down and uh, – a lot of times, uh, um, you know, uh, people with uh, l- larger groups, they want to come, they want to learn about cryptocurrency in general, they see how it works, uh, get a tour of the exchange, uh, they, they come in and then we go over it. So it's a lot more personal. Uh, when That's a lot of people brilliant. Go, yeah. Do you, a lot do, of, like, do you do educational things in your conference area too as well? Do you do courses yes. or... Yeah, so wow. we do webinars. Uh, we, we, we work very closely with the University of Calgary and, uh, and, uh, and uh, SAIT. It's, 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 a, it's a more of a technical school here. And, um, you know, our, our team is connected with their, uh, with their teams. And uh, we, we get a lot of interest from people trying to understand more what's a cryptocurrency, how it works. Uh, and we don't necessarily, um, you know, we, we, we don't promote co- coins. Uh, definitely not. Um, you know, if I, I get a lot, I get a lot of people calling and saying, Hey, uh, when should I buy? And, should, and <laughs> that's not for me to give you an advice on that. But what we try to do is actually explain what is a cryptocurrency? Why is it important? Uh, we always tell people to be very careful. Uh, you know, cryptocurrency is volatile, and uh, and uh, you see, we see a lot of. There's a lot of things that still need to happen for it to become mainstream, and we want people to be. You know, the you, you don't want people to go put their uh, their life saving in no. in, in, in in Bitcoin or any other currency. As a matter yeah, of and, and unless they've got several houses they want to, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yes. No, you're right, because I, I work in blockchain and I'm a journalist. People ask me the whole time, should I buy Bitcoin? I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a financial analyst. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I think it's a very exciting, amazing uh, cryptocurrency. I think it's fantastic, but I'm not going to advise you where to put your money. You're dead right. That's a huge, actually, interesting point is that you are a real company. People can walk into your offices. That's massive pick up the phone and speak to your employees. I think that that, uh, that is pretty impressive. Um, in terms, you mentioned earlier, you, you know, how do you make sure that, that I mean, you're, you're a real company, you're a real entities, whatever. You mentioned fraud, a lot of fraud around uh, exchanges in particular, they're hacked or there's internal jobs. We don't know either. How do you safeguard against that? And how do you tell your customers this is not going to happen with Index? Yeah, so uh, multiple things. It starts from uh, the banking piece. Uh, we have segregated bank accounts. Uh, you, you, you walk into uh, any bank account and you say, I want to make a deposit to National Digital Asset Exchange. They know who we are. Um, and, uh, and then you can make a deposit directly to our bank account uh, there. That's powerful. Uh, that's, you, you cannot get that with any of the bigger exchanges out there. Uh, with that, we have, seg- we have full segregation of customer funds. So we have an operation account that's for Index that, you know, that's our money. And then we have our customer uh, bank account that mm-hmm. all their funds get saved there. Um, 
that's the first point for for uh, so it's easy for auditing purposes uh, we don't mix our assets with the with the with the client's assets whatsoever which is very sound financial principles obviously it, it, yeah, yeah. So, so and that goes back to show that you know we do have a cpa cfa uh, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, they do uh, they're licensed and then they do everything by the book right uh, <clears throat> A lot, a lot of changes coming this year for the in the regulatory piece. That's going to enforce exactly what we we believed was the right way to do things, and then I, I think that's what's going to um, um, uh, a lot of exchanges are going to be required to do the same thing. Uh, now for uh, the other piece, which is the crypto assets, we did a full segregation between the exchange and the wallet. So. Uh, we have partnered up with Ledger Vault for cold storage, which uh, Ledger is one of the, you know, very popular, well-known. And then we have BitGo for hot wallets and we, we built pretty much a firewall. So even if someone were to be able to hack the exchange, there's no way they can get into the money yeah. because we, we have built multiple layers and and everything requires approvals so uh, you will see that our withdrawals are uh, is not automated uh, if people want to with, withdraw money it goes through um, you know an approval process uh, and we still bring the human touch to it we have people that processing these withdrawals it requires more than one signature to uh, process withdrawals depends on the limits, uh, you know, smaller limits versus larger limits. Uh, and with that, we're noticing that, you know, a lot of times people make mistakes. Uh, a lot of times people uh, recognize that, hey, I'm not sending money. You know, I don't want to send it anymore. And then they contact you and be like, hey, can you cancel it? And yes, we can cancel it for you. So we have built that, uh, that you know, uh, sometimes it's convenient for for you to automate the entire process uh and a lot of times it's it's uh, it's a lot more convenient when you know that uh you can uh you can sleep at night knowing that uh your customers funds are safe and your exchange is safe you know mm-hmm. for for services like ours uh um y- you cannot afford to wake up one morning and see that someone hacked you for a multiple, you know, multi-million dollar uh, hack or whatnot. So, and with that, on top of that, because we really care about customers' identity information uh, and sensitive data, we do have a bug bounty program, and uh, uh, and we get a lot of ethical hackers that always test in the platform and report in any issues. And uh, um, you know, we're very diligent about that. We try to to solve all of these issues if there's any um and That's so very far powerful. Been good. So do, far, do you know i mean i love the fact you can go into the bank and they know who you are so it's not like some foreign crypto exchange thing you know you actually go into your your high street bank that's very powerful i also love that even though obviously the beauty of cryptocurrency is that you control your money but mm-hmm. sometimes we forget things and sometimes we pick up we pick up the, the phone and say can i just check that i'm doing this right and that's so powerful to know that that there is somebody that can help you in that process because not, not everybody is the nerd in the corner who knows exactly what they're doing. Some people, they want to invest, they want to exchange, but sometimes they need that backup of saying, am I doing this right? Have I, have I got the right end of this? And I think that's very comforting for people, for the, your retail uh, yeah. users who want to do it, who aren't, you know, the, the seasoned financial pros. It's very, very powerful. Um, uh, future, future plans. So what's coming down the track? So now we're really focusing on uh, on bringing liquidity to the marketplace. We're seeing a lot more people are interested in in trading, um, and uh, and unfortunately, Canada being smaller country, and uh, you know you dissect that into maybe ten percent of Canadians that trade or buy crypto and most of them you know buy and hold uh, crypto we wanted to bring liquidity with the you know the regulation uh, landscape changing a lot this um you know or going to change we wanted to bring uh, more liquidity to the marketplace so right now we're really focusing on us dollar pairs 
uh, the Canadian pairs are, uh, they carry with them a, a premium because of, you know, uh, low liquidity and there's an FX uh, portion to it. So if, if you do like a comparison across all the different exchanges, you'll see that index is we're one of the cheapest one in Canada for for buying uh, and selling cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, More good news. Yeah, compared to like uh, uh, you know there there is a medium study that uh, a competitor did, and you can see that we are we are one of the cheapest one. Um, um, actually, we're the cheapest one from Canadian perspective, but uh, we, we had crack in that we're right there with them in, in terms of the, the fee, uh, the overall fee for per transaction. Um, so for for that, uh, we wanted to bring U.S. dollar pairs. U.S. dollar pairs, they don't. There's a lot of liquidity around them. All the exchanges around the world that use either USD or or stable coin, and this is what we're in the process of doing. So we're making some changes uh, to our system. We're making some new partnerships to bring liquidity, uh, counterparties to bring liquidity to our exchange. And we're hopefully that's gonna open the door for more Canadians to be able to, you know, not only be able to on-ramp and deposit money and buy crypto, but also be able to trade it and know that their money is safe and, and then they're dealing with a Canadian institution and uh, they can trade it back and forth and then they can uh, withdraw it back to their bank account. We do direct bank deposits, same day settlement as well. That's so cool. Just a curious, I'm kind of curiosity because one thing that really appeals to me is that you actually have an office. I can walk in to your office and greet your employees. Would you consider opening offices in the rest of the world, in the States, physical offices? Uh, I, I think uh, I think uh, I think in order to operate in the states in general, we need to have an entity there. So we need to have an office. Uh, and now the states is, uh, is is a bit different. You have like fifty different uh, states, and uh, each one has its own requirements. So uh, depends on. Uh, you know, one thing about us is uh, we were invited part of the government of Canada to Switzerland last year to uh, to part of invest in Canada, right? So we were representing the cryptocurrency industry uh, there. So we do carry, uh, we, we do have a very strong relationship with the government of Canada, the trades commissioners, and we are always watching and they're always helping us looking at different markets uh, and, uh, and analyzing like market entry uh, to those uh, uh, to these uh, uh, to these areas so if if for instance you know we decide that okay we're opening in the states everything is good and we see that there is uh, there is potentially a gap in the market and then there is some states that they don't need to get the the, the right uh, um, you know attention from the rest of the big exchanges then we would definitely open a, a mm. It's just such a, a, a strong sales point, just the fact that you have a physical presence. I mean, that, I'm not going, ooh, that is very strong from a retail perspective. It's just, and I, I don't mean a big, huge, glitzy, you know, it could yeah. be a little two bit. Yeah, we're not trying to, we, 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 I tell my guys at the office, we're not trying to be the next Binance or Coinbase. They have their own niche. They, they have their own users, and uh, we we believe that there is, uh, you know, maybe ten fifteen percent of the world population are in are trading crypto, and the rest are are just they they hear the news and they're scared and, and they don't want to deal with it. And uh, and we wanted to bring that human factor to it. And it's not all about money. It's all about you know. Um, you know, uh, you go and you read our reviews on the internet, and then um, you know uh, you'll you'll never uh, come across any negative reviews. It's just because of the way we interact with people. Yeah. Well, no, it sounds amazing. It's been fascinating talking to you today. I love your approach. It's very different. It's very real world, actually. You know, exactly. Yet yeah, you've all the you've all the swings and roundabouts. You have the the lower fees. You have the fast um, onboarding. The links to the banks. You're ticking a lot of boxes there. Well yeah. done. Thanks. Well done. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thank you.